Hey, 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 what's up? This is Keisha here from Let's Talk. As you come on in, hit subscribe and share this message out. If you're watching from another platform, come on over to YouTube and subscribe. Share this message out. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. And as you know, this platform is all about exposing unhealthy thoughts and replacing them with healthy ones. So let's get right in it. Now, I have um, a rant that I'm going to do today. And, you know, some of you, you know, might be with it. Some of you might not be with it. But as you know, I'm always real, authentic. It is what it is. Right. And I'll just say whatever I'm saying. I'm saying what I'm saying. OK, so this is for ladies. Right. Regarding the men. OK, so for the men that's watching this. Don't take it personal, but it is what it is, okay? And for the ladies, as you're listening to this, you know that you probably have experienced some of the things that I'm going to share right now. And if you are now happily, you know, in a relationship and all of that, the only thing that I say to you is don't forget the relationships that you had prior to this one that was busted. That's all I say, right? Because I find that there are lots of women who, once they find uh, love, um, they tend to talk from the perspective of it was always love when they have had their share of busted relationship with busted men, i.e. they share information with people from the perspective of they've always had it together. So this is a disclaimer for you as well, too. Listen from the ears of your prior busted relationship, not from the relationship that you are currently in that may be happy and fa la 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 la. And for those men who used to be this person and now you have changed, listen from the perspective of when you was this dude. OK, so when you are advising or sharing or whatever it is, don't forget the dude that you used to be before the dude that you are now. Now, hand claps for all those that are, you know, in a loving, happy relationship. Don't get me wrong. I think that it's always a great thing and we should always share from that perspective when you are in a happy relationship. And for those men that used to be bums and now you a good dude, always share from that perspective as well too. But give it both sides. Give both sides when you're sharing and you know, talking to other people. Why? Because people want the real, right? People want the where you came from, not where you are now. Okay. So give those steps too. Don't leave those out. So let's get right into this rant. I know that in, you know, lots of scenarios with single women, as I am, that you meet men who you feel are nice guys. You feel like, you know, they cool dudes, but they don't have nothing to offer you, right? They don't have nothing to offer you. And I am not knocking a dude that's trying. He's on his grind. You know, he has dreams. He has goals. He has things that he's striving for. I am not knocking that at all. But what I am saying is this. When you approach a female who, you know, has her stuff together, you need to come ready to compliment that. Not come for the pull up, basically, right? You need to come complimenting where she is. And I find that a lot of men, right, that they come into a situation with a woman. And if you listen to um, a prior video that I did on are you chosen or are, do you choose, right? Um, if you haven't, make sure you scroll back and listen to that one, because lots of times as women, we are chosen. We don't choose. We see a few things about the dude that we like and, you know, it's all good. We figured we can help him come up. But when men choose us, they choose everything that they want at that moment. So if you smart, if you're ambitious, if you're a go getter, if you paying all your bills, you got your own place to live, you got your car, you got your career, you got money in the bank, you ain't in debt. They see all those things as like I hit the jackpot besides, you know, a little bit of the you know younger generation that say and you ain't got no kids. Come on. You a prize, right? 
So they see that and they go in. Oh, let me not forget. You cute. You got a nice body. You know, all that right there. Sexy. Yeah, they're looking for that too, right? That's on site. But besides that, once they have a conversation with you, those are the things that they're looking for. Now, the problem is that they're not coming to the table with a job, maybe, their own place to live, a car, money in the bank, ambitious, a career. They're not coming to the table with that sometimes. But yet and still, they expect you to accept them as they are. However, they're expecting you to be all that they want you to be from hello. Now, as I said, don't take this personal. If it applies to you, it applies. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. Okay? So I'm saying this to say that I was her, right, before. I was her before. That coming into a relationship or meeting a man, it was kind of like, if you nice, you seem kind, um, you are um, giving, caring, you know, those things, right? You know, you got definitely a job right? Definitely a job. That's like without saying, um, you know, you got your own place, you got your own car. Maybe you're not stacking the dough in your bank account. Maybe you still trying to come up, you know, those type of things, you, you know, you chasing, chasing a dream, you know, trying to start your own business or, you know, maybe you just started your own business and you know, you're trying to come up. I was all about that life, right? I was all about that life. And I have had my share of relationships where I know clearly right? That the man coming to me was coming to me based on the assets that he saw with me. However, I was accepting being chosen based on the potential of what the man could be. Something's broken there, huh? Something is very broken there. And women commonly do that. So I'm just sharing as a single woman and have had, you know, a few relationships of my own that I feel extremely proud of myself that even of all of the busted relationships and the different things that I have been through in relationships with men, um, where, you know, there was lying or cheating or manipulating or whatever it was, right. That although I saw it, although I knew what I was looking at, I was still trying to give the opportunity for correction and change today. Ha, I am not her. I am not her. I feel like, and this is not to, you know, brag, you know, on myself at all, right? This is simply to state the facts. So, of course, I came from a busted background, broke, busted, didn't have nothing, right? You know, two sisters, we slept all in the same bed. We struggled, you know, financially, you know, we was in a one bedroom, you know, apartment in Brooklyn and we made it happen and it was all love right? And from that point, I had the vision of like, I got to do better, right? I want more in life. I deserve more in life. Yes. And I'm sure some of you watching probably feel the same thing that I'm saying, right? And now you are subject or victim to, right? However you want to see it, to those men that you see in your community, right? Those men that are around you, what you see, i.e. they on the come up, i.e. they a drug dealer, you know, whatever it is, that's what you see in your community. So therefore, that's what you gravitate to. We coming up, we going to come up together, you know, and, and that's all cool, right? I'm not mad at that at all. But this is the thing. At some point, I decided that I wanted more. I wanted to be more. I wanted to do more, right? Had a whole career in corrections making six figures, right? Bought my first house at, you know, 21. I was married at the time as well, too, right? And I'm not knocking that dude. He was a good dude, right? There were some flaws. There were some character defects. Absolutely, i.e., we not together today, right? But I'm not here to bash him because he was a good dude, right? Outside of that, he was my best friend. But besides that, right, I had that career. I was excited, 21, buying my first house, wanted to be an entrepreneur, you know, for years, you know, dibble dabbled in different things to try to make that happen. You know, coming on along my journey, I went to, you know, college, I went to Baruch, I went to Binghamton, I'm going to be an accountant, I'm going to make this happen, I'm going to own my own firm, la da 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 right? All of those dreams and visions and things that I wanted. 
Did I get to accomplish all of those? No, and kind of partially, I'm glad on the accounting front, right? But what did I do? I continued through struggle and sacrifice and, uh, you know, all of the unknowns, um, the discomforts, the falling down, getting back up, all of that, right, as I went on through my life. And mind you, doing all of this in and out of different relationships that were not excellent, right? Because I'm being with, with men who, you know, they coming up, right? But they not mature, right? They coming up, but they don't value the relationship. You know, they coming up, but they don't see the value in the queen before them, right? And I'm not saying just me as the queen. I'm saying you as the queen as well too. And the men that you have had in your life. So I say this, I continued on my journey. I ended up, you know, in real estate, buying several rental properties. I ended up a VP, you know, in a bank. Um, I wrote the book, Overcoming the Hand You Were Dealt, i.e. you will hear about some of the relationships that I was in um, where that mindset was, you know, prevalent, you know. Um, but one of the things that I know for sure, I never was willing to settle, right? I may have given love, I may have given my heart, and I may have given my time. And that's one thing that I possibly... No, that I would have changed, that I would change, actually, if I had it to do all over again, my time. I would have still given my love. I would have still given my commitment. Um, but my time, I would not have given because I would have exited those relationships probably sooner than I did, right? That's something that I would have changed. And I give that to you today as something to take away as a, hmm, that's an important nugget right there. Your time is valuable. You will never get that back, okay? So your time is very important. That is a huge uh, asset, right? So your time is extremely important. So that's one thing that I would have changed um, if I had it to do over again. But would I have given my love? Would I have given my support, my care? Yeah, I would have done that, done that again. You know why? Because you never know, you know, what that support, especially in our communities, right? That, you know, our men need that covering. They need that support. They need that encouragement. They need that respect. They need that honor, right? So that they can come up. But at the same time, your time is of great value where you cannot stay in those relationships without a return on your investment for but so long. So I would have changed that fact. But nonetheless, I did all of those things. I wrote the book, Overcoming the Hand You Were Dealt, which, as I said, shares some of the relationships that I've been in. I've been able to, you know, save money, invest money. I've been able to grow and do things even as a single woman. Right. So you being a single woman, you do not need a man to validate you. You do not need a man for you to be able to accomplish the goals and the dreams that you have. Now, is it great? And I'm not knocking love at all. Absolutely. It was a dream of mine to have love and marriage, the white picket fence and, you know, the whole nine yards. We striving and we grinding together. And I respect and love all of those that are out there doing that. Because if you're on the same page together making it happen, you are blessed. Okay. And I have all the respect in the world for those that have that. I'm talking to those that don't have that. And now it's almost like a deficit in your life, a liability in your life, staying in that relationship that's unhealthy and holding you back from going after and being all that you can and should be. That's what I'm talking about. So for the single ladies today that's watching this, know that you can go forward and you do not have to have a man in your life. Although it would be a plus. It would be, you know, a nice thing. It would be comfortable, you know, to have that type of relationship. But if you don't, it's okay. It is definitely okay. Because I find that I have come to a place in my life now where the important questions are being asked. What do you come to the table with? This is what I come to the table with. And I'm not trying to hear love. And I'm not knocking love. Love is a beautiful thing, but love is not enough. Love is not going to give me a place to live. Love is not going to pay no bills. Okay. Love is not going to help me sleep peacefully at night knowing that I don't have no debt. Okay. Love is not going to fund the dreams and visions and goals that I have for my future. Love alone is not going to do that. So no offense, but 
That's not where I am. And for some of you ladies watching this, that is not where you are too. And be unashamed and be unafraid to speak your truth. If a man is coming to the table and you now know, based on what you know, that you would have to support and fund and undergird whatever it is that you guys got going on, that is a liability. That is not an asset coming to you. I am so sorry, men. I am so sorry. But if you are approaching a woman who you feel, as I said, is, you know, a dime, a diamond in the rough, whatever you want to call it. If that's what you feel that you are approaching and you're wanting that to be reciprocated, then you need to be coming with something that is of value to that woman. Something that you're bringing to the table, something that is going to enhance her, something that is going to elevate her, something that's going to continue to propel her forward, something that is going to provide leadership and growth and stability and security. You heard? That is what it is that you want to be coming to the table with. And if you come into the table less than that, then you might want to find a match for you. You might want to find a match that is exactly where you are and then you guys can do that together. But if you're coming to someone who has already walked that journey and has primarily walked that journey alone and was able to accomplish the things in life that they have accomplished, trust and believe you being a nice guy, you being a great man, you being loving, you being kind, you being given all of that. You may even be good in bed. However, comma, you need to come with more than that. Because she needs more than that. Now, I'll use myself as an example, right? I have accomplished a lot of things in my life, right? I have gotten to the you know, place in my life of financial stability, and I'm grateful for it, right? Not just all my efforts, but God, you know, as well, too, supporting, not even as well, God providing doors to be open for me, right? And things that to open and, and, and um, give opportunity for me to make moves as I've been able to make moves to accomplish the things that I've accomplished, right? However, even though I know that that is the case, I cannot say yes to a man who is not coming into my life that is at least matching where I am. Those days are over. Those days are over. And you know, a part of me had to consider, right? Is that from bitterness? You know, is that from prior abusive, you know, relationships? You know, is that from uh, resentment of some sort? I had to think that through just to analyze because I believe that self-reflection is something that everyone should practice, right? Who are you really? Where are you? Why are you thinking the way that you think? Why are you feeling the way that you feel, right? Is it coming from selfishness? Is it coming from hurt? Is it coming from regret? Is it, what is it coming from? Is it coming from growth? Yeah. So that's where I sit. From my experiences, you know, even the dudes that were not good to me, I forgive them, right? I ain't got no hate in my heart for none of them. Right. Because at the end of the day, in truth, I really feel it was their loss. I really feel that it was their loss. Why? Because I know what I come to the table with. So I'm not I'm not mad. I am not mad. Yes, I've been hurt. Yes, I have definitely been hurt. And I've had to filter that through and figure that out. And how did you allow yourself? And, you, you know, all of that. Yeah. But I forgive. I don't have no hate in my heart for them whatsoever. But the growth space is this. That if you are coming to the table with certain things that you know that you done grinded it out for, certain things that you done struggled and scraped and whatever, cried some tears at night trying to figure out, strategize, whatever, to get yourself to where you are today, you better not allow some man to come into your life who is not at least matching. So back to the point that I was getting ready to say. Because I be talking, you know what I'm saying? I be talking and I come straight from the heart, straight from the hip. It's not like, you know, I be writing down a bunch of notes, you know what I'm saying? I come straight from the heart, straight from the hip. hip. Why? Because I want to reach you straight into your heart. 
okay, straight into your mind and where you may be in experiences that you may be having and how you may be thinking where you might need a shift or you might need somebody to co-sign those thoughts that you have where other people are telling you that you being shady, that you being petty, you know, that you want too much, your, your uh, standards are too high or whatever, okay, I'm coming straight for you. So you, you know that no, that is not the case. You have grown. You have been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And that's not where you live in right now. So I feel this personally. I don't need a man to take care of me financially. I just want to know that he can. And I'm not sure if you can identify with that, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to know that you can. If something happened, could you step up and provide for me? Could you keep me at the the, the same, you know, lifestyle or, 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 you know, no stress financially that I currently live right now? Could you provide that? Right. Am I going to be homeless if I can't provide for myself? Am I going to have to, you know, change my whole lifestyle because I can't provide for myself? So I just want to know that you can. OK, so I think that that is a, a good place to be. Not that I'm in a situation that, you know, if I did not have this man in my life, that I would be financially baseline. You know, what I'm saying wouldn't really have much you know, living paycheck to paycheck. And it's this man that came into my life that brought me up to some, you know, financial status or whatever it is. Right. And I'm not mad at that. I am absolutely not mad at that because I feel like teamwork makes the dream work. Okay. But I'm talking about women who can identify with what it is that I'm sharing right now, that you have grinded it out, that you are either an entrepreneur, a business owner, you have a strong career where you are financially sound, you have saved money, you have invested, whatever you've done, that you have now put yourself in a position to be financially stable, that you want a man and deserve a man that's coming to the table matching where you are. Okay. If you are ambitious and you are driving and you are fighting for a dream, a goal, starting a business, building a business, whatever it is, you want a man that's coming in that could support that vision, that can support that dream, that goal, that can be there as part of a, you know, um, what word am I looking for? Meaning that basically... Um, can value what it is that you are doing and be there cheerleading and supporting what you're doing, letting you know where your gaps are. You know what I'm saying? Letting you know where your opportunities for growth are, but also supporting you with where you are in your, you know, uh, floors or whatever. Right. But they are also willing to point out the things that you need to grow in for you to be better. Right. That they are bringing that to the table as well, too, that they are visionaries, that they are prayers, that they now can undergird you in the spirit realm. Right. That they could step in and speak truth to life to you. Right. That you're not the leader or the head or the think tank. Right. For the whole relationship. Why? Because if you make a wrong move, everybody's collapsing. So you want somebody who is strong, someone who. um is, you know, their ego is in check, right? That's important. You want someone, you know, who their self-esteem is in check. They're not in competition with you. They're about completion, right? So that is what you are, what you are looking for and not someone that you got to throw on your back and carry. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So you might call this, you know, a rant. You might not call it a rant, right? But it's a message. It's a message. OK, for those that's listening, that can identify and relate to what it is that I'm saying. I've had my share of relationships where I threw it on my back and was like, let's go. I've had my share where I've invested money, you know, what I'm saying in, you know, the relationship or whatever it is. And it's like you reckless with yours. You know, I've had my share where I've been in a relationship where you can't see my vision. Right. So you're criticizing where I'm trying to go. And now I got to fight with you because, you know, you got a self-esteem issue. Right. Or you trying to put me in my place. Right. You trying to tell me that my drive and my independence is a problem. All of those things. Right. All of those things. And I say, ladies, if you are me. Just like I say, I am me, you, I am you, you are me, we are each other, right? We walk this journey in life and we have all kinds of experiences. 
Yeah, but we don't have to hide and we don't have to be secret and we don't have to feel like, oh, we think we are better than because we desire and deserve more. We don't have to settle, right? And men that's listening to this, just know you should be trying to come to the table to not only be able to stand flat footed yourself and be a man, but you also want to come to the table where you have a position where that woman could respect you, right? Because of how you think and how you move and your ambitions and ambitions and your drive and your financial stability, right? You want her to be able to respect you. You want her to be able to come to you and say, babe, this is what I'm thinking. And you got a whole thought that you can inject as opposed to, I don't know. I don't know what you think. Do, do it. I'm, I'm good. Whatever you do, I'm good with it. No, no, that's not really what we want. You know, that's not really what we want at all. We want someone that can, yes, challenge us, but challenging us with coming higher, not challenging us with trying to bring us down to size. And I've had my fair share of that as well, too. So as I said, this may be a rant to you and I'm calling it a rant. I'm labeling it as a rant and I'm going to be delivering rants, as you will see going forward, talking about the things that we don't easily talk about, talk about the things that we feel and think that we don't say, and also talk about some experiences that I personally have had myself to in relationships. But you can listen or read, right? From my book, Overcoming the Hand That You Were Dealt, you can grab a copy of that from mentalshiftmastery.com or you can get it from lifeunlimited1.com as well too. But absolutely, grab a copy, right? It will show you my ups and downs and my roller coaster experiences in life in general. But it also gives you a few uh, scenarios of relationships that I've been in that was busted, okay? And probably once you read that and hear me say, and I forgive, right? I forgive, I ain't got no hate. I ain't got nothing but love. You know what I'm saying? Nothing but love whatsoever. You know why? Because in, in, in every sense of it, I know who I am. I know what it is that I offer. My issue is that I invested too much time into trying to uh, get someone else to see the value in me. And those days are over. Those days are over. 100%. Over And when you read the stories, you might be able to relate to what it is that I'm sharing. You might criticize and judge, right? But if you be honest, you're not far removed from some of those scenarios that I described in that book. And for those of you that have been right there or in worse situations, guess what? There is hope. There is a way out. It's a decision. And there is more for you in life, for you to be who God calls you to be. And it doesn't rely on what a man does or does not do. And for those of you men that have changed direction in your life, because change is not change until it's changed and you have actually really changed, then you come. You come ready for that woman that you are trying to have in your life that's going to compliment you. Make sure that you compliment her as well, too. And for those of you that's still sitting in that place, sit. Sit in it. Don't come for nobody who's on her A trying to come up on that A. No, sit down or go be with someone who is where you are and y'all come up together. Do not try to ride the back of someone else, some woman who's already done grind and scratched and cried and everything else that needed to be done to try to be where she is. And then you want to come in just because you have the M A in title that don't mean nothing to me that don't mean nothing to me because a man is a man based on his actions a man is a man based on his word a man is a man based on what he brings to the table a man is a man based on what it is that he stands for that guides him that directs him that driving force that's what makes a man and if you are not able to bring that to the table with a woman in a relationship then you don't deserve to be in a relationship. So that's all in love. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all in love. Please do not hate. This is a rant. You will probably see some more coming, talking about different topics or whatever. Also based and rooted in my own experiences, right? So I'm not judging. 
I'm just speaking to those who can relate to what it is that I'm sharing. So I hope that you got something out of that. I hope for women that you realize that it's okay to say no, right? It's okay for you to choose. It's okay for you to have your standards of what it is that you're willing to accept or not and be able to speak those out and speak that truth. And for men, know that we do have expectations, right? We are generally chosen. We don't choose. But within, we have these expectations of what it is that we want. Stop trying to make us settle for the BS that you bring into the table. Stop just because because you got the man title because you good in bed. What? You know what I'm saying? You got swag. I mean, come on. Those days is over. Those days is over. And I'm just here to share that message with you guys. Anyway, have a great rest of your day. Be blessed and let it be fantastic. And every other day going forward, keep your mind right. Keep your heart right. Keep pushing forward for whatever it is that you are aspiring to and believe in yourself, even if no one else does. So take care. I'll speak to you next time on Let's Talk. Make sure you follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I'm kidding. Follow me, though, really. Follow me at um, Life Unlimited KT on YouTube and Overcomer2770 on Instagram. And also subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. Absolutely. Subscribe and visit mentorshiftmastery.com or lifeunlimited1.com and grab a copy of my book, Overcoming the Hand You Were Dealt. So take care. Be blessed. I'll speak to you soon. Mwah.